Welcome back to some more Let's Play Trauma Team. In the last episode, we're having some a lot of controversy and conspiracies about this whole murder of Abby and Alma Parker. In this episode, we're going to take a look at Carolyn Bowen's testimony and see what she has to say here. She looks kind of hot, I'm not going to lie. Let's take a listen. Emotional. Is she unstable? That's just normal, Dr. Kimishima. You're a little too calm. Well, I have my moments too. Sometimes. Anyway, Carolyn's insisting that she was home the entire time. Is there any way to prove that? No, there aren't any witnesses. She says she was alone the entire time. Did she know that Sean and Abigail were together that night? No, we told her that her husband is a suspect in a murder investigation. She shouldn't know that Sean was involved with Abigail. We're trying to keep the details under wraps. She shouldn't know. I see. If that's the case, then she knows yeah. too much. Huh. What do you mean? Uh, let's listen to her testimony one more time. Pay attention. Peculiar statement. I already know what that statement is. So let's go, go ahead and skip through it. So, I don't give a rest this one. That bit at the end. Why did she call him a cheating bastard? <laughs> what a player. That could be a possibility. But what if there was another reason? Like what? Well, for example... Saw him with Abigail. Yes. What if she had seen Sean and Abigail together? That would explain her hostility. If that's the case, then she did witness what happened to the victim that night. This might lead us to something even more important. Hmm... Wait a minute, didn't we get another? Oh no, we didn't. I thought we got something more from this guy. But no. Let's sort out information. She must have known he was having an affair. Nope. Hmm. Nope. Saying killer, nah. Win boobers. None of this is relevant. Nope. None of that is relevant. No new testimonies. Uh, yep, no new testimonies from nobody. Gotta be something with this, cause I just got what the hell, man. They're still analyzing the damn cell phone. Oh my gosh. Hey little guy, I need something analyzed. Sure. Is it the lighter that was found at the murder scene? Yes. I just need you to find any fingerprints on it. Fingerprints, uh, just a second. Same set of prints repeated over and over. Hmm. Can we find out whose they are? Let's see. These are Carolyn Bowen's. Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> the one who left this lighter at the scene. Nice. Bowen Carolyn. Right. Sean's wife, Carolyn, left the lighter at the murder scene. So she was so she was there at the time of the murder. Carolyn Bowen, Sean's wife, left the lighter at the scene of Abigail's killing. Her interrogation suggests that she saw her husband together with the victim. Does this mean that Carolyn is behind both the murders in this investigation? We can't say for sure. True. 
Even if she had a reason for killing Abigail, she had no motive for all this. Yeah. But she may be able to provide us with information regarding Abigail. I'm still not convinced it's the same killer, though. I need a little more information from her. That's the little guy's job. I don't know why, but I'm curious. Okay, how old is Sean Bowen? 44. How old is Carolyn? 35. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say, if she was, like, younger than, like... If she was at least, like, 25 or something, then she a gold digger. <laughs> I mean, granted, she could still be a gold digger, but still, I don't know. Alright, heavy evidence. Dr. Kimishima, what's this? It wasn't Sean who left the lighter at Abigail's murder scene. It was Carolyn. That makes her our most probable suspect now. Really? I wonder what HQ's going to think when they hear this. I don't care. I'm not interested in your office politics. I know that. So, what do you think? Honestly. Huh. I find it most likely that she's not the killer. Still, she may have witnessed something. If she finds herself our main suspect, perhaps that will loosen her tongue a bit. I see. I'll use this info when I speak to her then. You're going to talk to her yourself? That's odd. It takes a liar to catch a liar. We've all got secrets, Damn it. don't we? I'll be counting. Didn't mean to skip to that says. Right. Oh, by the way, Abigail's cell phone has been repaired. Great. Were the records of received calls intact? She did receive a call during the time we believe she was at the restaurant. However... However... We've traced the call to a nearby payphone. Huh, I see. I wonder if this information will lead us anywhere. We're going to ask around the area if there were any witnesses near the phone, but we don't expect much. Still, there's no doubt that that was the last call made to her cell phone. I see. So there's a good chance that call came from the murderer after all. Abigail was called out from a public phone. And then she was killed. We'll continue looking into the deal with the payphone. Oh, we spoke to the chef again, too. Check out the recorder when you have time. Alright, I'll listen to it later. Okay. Getting some more revelations here. Questioning? Who is it this time? Carolyn Bowen, Sean's wife. Once they confronted her about the lighter, she started talking. I see. I'll check it out. All right. Stick listen here. So what if my oh God, twenty lines. That's got nothing to do with. Huh? Why am I a suspect? N no, I'm telling you, it wasn't like that. That's skank. I didn't report it because I knew I'd get dragged into this mess. <sighs> yes, that's right. I happened to be out that day and saw them dining together. They looked like they were having the time of their lives, and I lost it. I was going to charge in there and slap both of them, and then the skank left the restaurant still on her phone. I followed that slut, but just because I was curious, I didn't want her to get away. Of course I was angry. She went into a warehouse not far from there. I couldn't She's see so from mad. where I was hiding. But she didn't come out for a while, so I peeked into the warehouse. And there, there was this hairy beast. It, it was on top of her. It was doing something to her hand with its terrible claws. I, I knew she'd been killed, but I, I had nothing to do with it. I mean, it serves her right. Did she think she could just steal any man she wanted? That's probably when I dropped the lighter. Of course, I didn't report it. I would have been the very first suspect. I don't believe it. This is one weird testimony. Our murder investigation suddenly turned into a monster hunt. We've had a sketch artist create a picture from her account, but... Are there any animals that size around here? Don't be <laughs> with someone wearing a mask and some kind of costume. I thought as much. Could the killer be insane? Who can say? There's no way to know anything yet. 
freaking weird. We need the help with the Scooby Doo gang. With all these monster shit, with all this monster nonsense. Someone called her. Okay, Skype. Really? Oh my god. Please tell me you guys didn't hear that. Did. The fuck? That's so stupid. I had myself on Do Not Disturb, and then all of a sudden. God damn. Anyway. So we got everything, right? Yeah. We need to start storing stuff out. From the sketch, the murderer was wearing a mask. Now I know what that white shard from the fireplace was. It must have been from the mask that the murderer was wearing while committing the crimes. Ooh. Solid evidence. But why would the murderer throw the mask into the fireplace? Whatever the reason, it helps to sort everything out. Okay, now that we got that out of the way. Okay, I need to sort out the information I have on hand. My main concern right now is the costume worn by whoever killed the two women. How did it end up in the fireplace in the Parker residence, where Alma was murdered? The most logical reason that can be considered at the moment is... Destroy evidence. Yes. Putting it in the fireplace could be an attempt to destroy it. And if that is the case, something strikes me as odd about how Joseph, Alma's husband, was acting. That is... He confessed to the murders. Yes. He confessed to Alma's murder from the very beginning. If he was willing to confess, what reason would he have to hide any... That's why I don't think it's him. Hmm. Let's assume for a moment that someone else is the real killer. Can we follow this hypothetical person's steps? This person would have killed both Alma and Abigail. The first person to be killed would have been... Abigail. Right. Alma's corpse was found first, but Abigail had been killed before then. In other words, the killer wore a costume to kill Abigail, then killed Alma the next day, after which the costume was discarded into the fireplace. However, we haven't found the murder weapon yet. The killer would also have some connection to the two victims as well. We can assume that Abigail personally knew her murderer. The reason for this is... She responded to the phone call. Right. She received a phone call from a payphone to call her out. The killer knew Abigail's phone number, and Abigail rushed out right after receiving the call. It's unreasonable to think that she would do that for someone she didn't know. Similarly, there's a good chance that Joseph knows the killer as well. This is because... He's lying to protect them. Yes. If that wasn't so, Joseph would have no reason to defend whoever killed his wife. So, is the killer someone that the entire Parker family would be acquainted with? What? This is getting crazy! Uh, Dr. Kimishima, sorry to keep you waiting. We've taken a look at the clock we recovered from the Parker house and... Huh? Oh, hello? Naomi, can you hear me? Alyssa? Uh, what are you doing there? Little guy? Um, this girl said that she really had to talk. <laughs> uh, all right, Alyssa, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. I need to do some work with the man you're with. Be a good girl and be quiet for a little bit. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, um, about that clock. Yes, I heard that much. Get to it. As you mentioned, the decoration on the clock matches the wound on the corpse's head. It probably fell off the desk and struck the victim's head. This may have happened while she was struggling with her assailant. I see. Is it possible for that wound to have been the cause of death? Uh, no, that's impossible. The impact wouldn't have been enough to kill someone. 
We've inspected the exterior of the clock, but it doesn't seem that damaged either. I see. Then... The hell? Little guy? What's that sound? Uh, 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 sorry. Looks like this clock is the kind that plays a little tune. Hey, Naomi? Alyssa, you said that you'd keep quiet. I'm sorry, but that clock is broken. Broken? Where? I mean, I know how this song goes, but this one part sounds all weird. Huh? Little guy, has anybody looked inside the clock? Uh, one second. Kimishima, there's something inside. Are you freaking kidding me? Found just what we're looking for. Thank you, Alyssa. Like, are you really, really kidding me? Like, nobody was smart enough to look inside the. Nobody had the right mind to look inside the clock and see what was inside of there. Like, really? How would you not know to look at the clock? I want to know more about this weapon, little guy. Oh yeah, no problem. Mm, it has an X-shaped cross section, and it's 25 centimeters long. It's thinner at the tip, and it's shaped more like a stake than a knife. This isn't a commercially available weapon. This is just a piece of steel with sharpened edges. Huh. So the killer made it? It seems that way. It's a poor cutting implement, but it could certainly be used for stabbing. I see. This could be the weapon, then. That's the murder weapon! Damn it. Okay. Someone called her out. These two pieces of information can fill in Abigail's timeline that night until her death. When was she last seen before she died? Three days. That's right. She was seen at a restaurant that she was a frequent customer at. The one with her at the time was... Sean Bowen. Not me, obviously, but not Sean Bowen. Correct. She was witnessed there with her boss. Afterwards, she left the restaurant alone. The reason she left was... She had a phone call. She wanted to fight with Carolyn! <laughs> yes. A phone call caused her to leave the restaurant immediately. But where did this call come from? Uh, payphone. Indeed. The payphone near the murder scene. It's most likely that the killer called her from the public phone, then waited for the victim to arrive and ambushed her. That would be what happened on Abigail's last night in this world. Her last night! Wait, what is this wine glass? You need to more, you need more about it. Okay. Wound and bruise. Nope. Weapon inconsistency. The real weapon shape. Oh, there it is. Yes. If we put these together, it should be easier to identify the weapon. The victims. Alma and Abigail. They both died from being stabbed in the chest by a weapon with the same shape. Their wounds match the shape of the weapon found inside the clock. The two of them were killed with the same weapon. This handmade stake. Damn. Okay, now who owns this weapon? There's still more stuff. Actually, no, nah, let's go back and save. Same killer. It's very likely there was killed by the same person. The shape seems familiar. Mm -mm. 
Hmm. The shape on the end of the weapon's hilt appears to match the bruise on Alma's hand. This bruise could be from Alma pushing her hand against the hilt of the weapon. If that's the case, then the person who used this weapon Wait, would what? It was Alma? What? Yes. If the weapon is used by thrusting forward while applying pressure with the palm, then the only way Alma could get this bruise is if she was the one wielding the weapon. But what does this mean? No way. Alma's the killer? But why though? So was she... Abigail was killed by the stab wound in her chest. The shape of her stab wound perfectly matches the shape of the weapon found in the clock. The bruise on Alma's palm indicates that she had been using the weapon. If Abigail was murdered by Alma, it would make sense for Abigail to respond to a phone call from her mother. There's also Abigail's final words to consider. Huh. Why would she say that? Well then who killed Alma then? If almost the killer, why did she, Abigail to tell her mother the one she didn't know was her? What? That's right. The killer was wearing a mask and covered in fur at the time. Even as Abigail lay dying, she had no idea that her killer was her own mother. That's why she called out, to warn her mother away. From the phone call, she would have assumed that her mother Alma was somewhere nearby. <sighs> but if Alma is the murderer, how did she end up killed by the weapon that she had been using? Yeah, did who killed- Yeah, who killed Alma then? If that's the case. But if that's true, who killed Alma? There's still more? But who did the actual murder? Okay, I'm gonna cliffhang you guys, alright? We're gonna end the episode here. Oh man, this is getting- This is getting crazy! Alma's the killer. Alma killed Abigail, right? But who killed Alma, though? That's that's my question. Like, this is getting crazy. All right, see you guys next time. I'll see. I need a break. Oh man. Uh. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next episode.